Okay. All right, folks, so it begins. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Wednesday. Uh, th sorry, Thursday. That tells you how sleepy I am. It's Thursday. And so hopefully that means that you've had a good week in the market so far. Uh, and there's two ways to have a good week in the market. So this, let me start today's session with this. There are two ways to have a good week in the market. The first way is to, the obvious way, is to have got into a few trades and made a boatload of money and you're up, I don't know, 5, 10, 15% on the week and you're happy. The second way to have made, I've had a good week in the market is that you've taken no trades. Now, I know that may sound counterintuitive. Uh, it may sound almost blasphemous. How can it be a good week in the market if you're taking no trades? Well, look at it this way. If you've taken no trades, it means you've had no losses. And hopefully the reason why you've taken no trades is that you have built into your trading approach certain filters that are designed to keep you from losing money. In essence, you're not just jumping into trades as you see them. You've made significant or sp specific tweaks to your trading approach to help you filter out uh, bad trades. Or you are uh, the kind of trader I am, which is a precision trader, which is you're waiting for specific levels and specific uh, uh, requirements to be hit. And if they don't get hit, you don't trade and you don't mind losing out on some good trades because you know that over time either because well for instance you don't have all data sitting in front of a chart so but you don't want to take you, you don't want to over trade and you know that over time waiting for those criteria to be met will give you high quality low risk trades so whichever of the two reasons you haven't taken a trade for instance i haven't taken a live trade this week uh and before we get into the teaching let's just do a brief recap uh of some of the analysis that we did going into this week this here is one of them this is a star trade now sadly i did not take it uh which is very painful because i wasn't uh at my charge to take it but i came back the entry had gone already and i, I got a new york uh i got a new york retracement but i think i just decided i was going to take the day off so this was our this was GU uh, coming into the week. Uh, one second. Yep. And we had said. Let's go on the forward chart. We had said coming into the week that we wanted to see this high. Basically, violated, and then price coming into this order block there. So that was our starting point uh, when the week began. That our scenario was that was going to happen. One second, let me just open up my Telegram on my phone just to check something I put in the registered students group. By the way, for those of you who don't realize this, in addition to the free stuff we put out here, we actually have a registered student community where we break stuff down into more detail. We give hands-on support. The details are in the description section of this video, how you can be a part of that. We've got a Telegram community. We've got uh, Zoom webinar forums that are not put on YouTube where you can actually get one-to-one -one mentorship and help with some of your stuff. You get access to uh, our instructors here at Israel Keys Wealth, all awesome traders in their own right, if I may say so myself. You do not want to miss out on that chance for seven... At the moment, you can get in for $79.99 a month. That is unheard of anywhere in the world. The level of skill, precision, but hands-on mentorship you get is just phenomenal. And so I truly, truly encourage you to avail yourself of it. So let's look in that telegram. Okay, cool. Yeah, just reminding myself. Hi, Monica. Hi, Gerard. Uh Registered students, as you come in, just let me know that you're in so I know who I'm dealing with. And like I said, I'll always tailor the session more to your specific needs. 
for my private conversations. If you make the time to be live on the webinar, then the webinar should be tailored to you. Right, so uh, it played out perfectly. Look, we threw that on there. It did sweep above that. It did come back beneath it, and it has reached that zone. And so I was looking for one or well, two trades, actually, because now that we're in that zone, it could be that one. It could also be this one here. This order block right here it may not be too obvious to you, but there's one there. And if you want to take the entire high, that's there as well. So it could be this one or that one. But if price does enough today, if there's enough volatility today and early tomorrow, we're going to talk about volatility, then I'm going to expect this to happen, something like this. Maybe here, let's change that color. So either here or maybe even down here. But the first trade, good to see yes, that the first trade has happened and I missed it. And I am so gutted because this is the trade. This is a beauty. And I'm going to so look at that screenshot. Let's take a screenshot of that. This is what you call a trophy. Now, if you had taken this trade, you'd be framing this on your wall as exactly how to do it. But I didn't take it. I didn't give it to you in the signal session. Uh, this week has just been a chill week for me. Um, a couple of things that I normally do on a weekly basis, I have not had to do them this week. Some of you who are part of my uh, my personal uh, church community know that we had something going on this week that we uh, postponed till next week. And so I've just been taking time to chill. I'm actually sat down now in a bathrobe, just resting. Unfortunately, that applied to my trading. So let's see how this happened. Let's see how this happened. So, uh, that's a one-hour chart. Cool. So, coming into the week, we said, come on. Right? We said we wanted to see this high here. This one here. That's a four-hour high if you look at it on the four-hour chart. So I'm going to put that in purple. We wanted to see that high violated. Now, this is Thursday. So this is Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. So coming into the week, this was all we could see. That's all we saw coming into the week. We didn't have any other, any other information. But... We wanted to see that. Why? Well, one second. Let me put that on there. So that's that's the controlling range. That's 50%. Anything beneath 50, remember, is discount. Anything above 50 is premium. Market makers will buy at a discount and sell at a premium. At the moment, we were hovering in an area of discount. And we felt we were going to get to at least here. But also, we if they are buying down here, they're going to want to sell somewhere in an area of premium. And so, we threw this on. I believe it was this one we threw on. Yeah, this one there. So, we threw that order block there on. And we said, yeah, that one there. And we said... Because that's just before 78.6, which is... Can you guys hear me, by the way? Just let me know. You can hear me loud and clear. Which is a anything above 78.6 is high premium. So that order block is in that range. So we said we're going to get there. If you draw this out in time even more, there we are. If you want to refine the order block, I'll refine it for you. Look at it there. This is the, this is the actual order block just there. That's the refined level. So... As the week begins, so this is Thursday, no, I don't have time, there's Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, so that's Monday, that, that consolidation, there's Monday. So the week started, it danced around on a Monday, we didn't trade on Mondays, we hardly trade on Mondays, it crossed it on a Tuesday, but that was not the trade we were looking for, this was the trade we were looking for, from here to there. 
how many pips from this level to that level 130 pips i am still kicking myself for missing this so how did i draw that zone so many of you are trying to figure out well a couple of things first of all once it crosses this purple line here we are wait and also this is an engulfing tuesday here let me show you how to see an engulfing on a lower or daily engulfing on a lower time frame now on a daily time frame it's very simple this is the engulfing on a daily time frame price is in this little region here and that candle is broken by this candle here so that's the daily engulfing here this this candle here is broken by this one here and it closes above it that's the daily engulfing the down candle this candle doesn't break it this candle doesn't break it this one does but you don't need a daily chart to see that why because i'm just going to take this away so take this entire level away i don't need the daily chart to see that for this reason this is monday here let me just put that in insert text this is monday that's monday right Now, I need you guys to remember this. For those of you making notes, write what I'm about to say down in your notes. I want to repeat. If you are making notes, if you are a note taker, write this down. I'm going to say this one more time. In fact, I'm going to help you. Let me get rid of that Fibonacci. So we actually, before we get rid of the Fibonacci, let's do what we normally do. We're going to drop a couple of red lines to let us know where the Fibonacci's are. One second, that's 61.8. Turn that into a horizontal line properties. So this is a four, it's a one hour. Actually, no, no, actually, no, just put it, put it in red. Let's put it in red. It's a Fibonacci from any time frame. Good to see you, Natalia. Right. Okay, so it's going to put the lines in. Let's tweak that one just a little bit. There we go. Delete. And so we now know. Uh, let me see. Text. Red. These are the things about trading that can be very tedious. But trust me, they help. So I'm just going to put that CH. That's a controlling high. This is a controlling low. If you don't know what controlling highs and lows are, go back and watch the previous webinars from the last two weeks. I ain't going to repeat every single thing every single time. If you're a registered student, you get them in order in your Telegram channel. If you're not a registered student, Please become one. We'd love to have you. We've got a great community. And you will love your experience. So that's 21.4. I'm going to get me an indicator. I'm going to get someone to design, pay someone to design an indicator that does this automatically. 
Oh, one second, I am going to swap my mouse again. Um, I've got several computers around me. One of them has a dodgy mouse. So I'm going to swap my mouse for one that doesn't waste my time. There we go. So 38.2 feels a lot better. I should just throw that mouse away and buy a new one. I can afford it. I don't know why I'm being so so cheap this will be 50 see how much faster this is going that'll be 50 that'll be 61.8 nope 61.8 and this here will be 78.6 Boy, I, I really am going to throw that mouse away. It just stresses me out. Cool. So we, so, we have our Fibonacci levels, right? So, cool. So, on Monday, price is middling around. And I want you to notice how Monday and Sunday, snap. Um, yeah, this should be at the edge of this. Anyway, that's fine. So, Monday and Sunday are just consolidations. Look at this here. This is very similar. If you take from the high of Monday to the low of Sunday, this is very similar to the Asian session in, good to see you, Reggie, good to see you, Ivy. This is very similar to the Asian session on a daily chart. Let's put these here. This is very similar to the Asian session. If you drop to a daily chart, let's pick up any particular daily chart. Let's use this one. You will see that the end of one day to the beginning of the next day is always a tight consolidation window, especially on a European or North American pair. Can you see that? That's very important, and we're going to come to that next week. I'm going to show you what that means next week and how you can apply it. I think I've shown some of you already who've been with us longer. But for the new guys who started two weeks ago, we're going to show this to you again. This start of the week is very important, or the day. It's called the Asian session. It helps you frame what you're going to do that day. It gives you an idea of what direction price is likely to go in. Well, you will see that on the weekly chart, it's the exact same thing. The beginning of the week and the end of the previous week is always a tight consolidation. You will even see it on a monthly chart to a, lot, to a lesser extent as well. That the beginning and end of every month, from one month to the next month. So two things, first of all, you shouldn't be trading that period of time. And I'm going to come to that in a second because it is low volatility, which is part of our, our thingy today. But then not also should you not be trading. No, actually, no, one more second. No, that's wrong. That's Monday, so that's Friday. Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. Yeah, I got that wrong. So there again, as you can see, it's even it's smaller than the one I just drew. Uh, that is not so there. So Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, there's that one again. So this is why, so you shouldn't be trading that, period. Now, if you take the two days combined, that's there. Some days, the Monday moves sharply. So this would be, this, yeah, some days, it, but still, you can see that this range here, even on a week where it moves hugely, 
130 pips. The weekly range is 100 and uh, is 286. So anyway, so we came out of Monday. We came down into Tuesday. Remember, on an up week, the low of the week will form on a Tuesday. Remember we said that, right? Or oh, Wednesday, 75% of the time. Well, so this here was then the low of the week into that order block there. The order block came from Friday. Boom. Now, you don't need to have caught Tuesday because Tuesday was the day where price showed you what it wanted to do. Missing the trade on Tuesday was not a bad thing. I wasn't going to trade this on Tuesday because here I told you how to see the engulfing. This Monday is high. That's the green line there. So right, this is what I wanted you to write down. The daily highs and lows. Write this down. When you are trading in a, in a range of price, always keep an eye on the daily price and lows from previous days. So... I'll show you what they are. That's the high from Monday. This is the low from Monday. Get rid of that. This is the low from Monday here. Come on, what am I doing? This is the low from Monday here. I'm going to draw this out into the future because they may still be relevant. This one has already been relevant. Just daily highs and lows, daily highs and lows, especially if they are in I want green because green is my color for day for the D1 chart. As you're going up or down, always keep an eye, not you. on what price is doing at the highs and the lows from the days in the last few weeks. So, right. Anyway, this one here, this one here, let me zoom my screen in. This one right here was a high for Monday. When price, when price blows through it on Tuesday, you just wait for price to come back to that low right, or that high right there from Monday. This is the sign that your scenario has played out. Once that happens, drop to a 15-minute chart. This is the high. This is Monday. That's the high here. This one here. I'm going to make it real thick so you can see it. I'm going to make it real thick. That one there. If price blows through it and forms that there. You want your Fibonacci on this lower time frame. Throw that out there. Wrong, low to high. We want it from high to low. There. And one, you want price to come back here. But two, you need it to form at an order block level. So I'm going to take away these for now. Now that you've seen them, these are the highs and the lows from the other days. So let's just leave the one we're looking at. You need one price to be beneath 50. It's beneath 50 there on this smaller Fibonacci. It's beneath 50 there. So it's now in discount. Ideally, you want to get down to 38.2. It has gone in down to 38.2 here. It is below the daily high from the previous day. From the previous day's engulfing. That's Monday. Your next question is, what 
liquidity profile am I looking for? So I'm going to throw this Fibonacci away. Now that we've seen, it's at 38.2. See that there? It's at 38.2. So we're now in a deep discount, meaning we're good to buy. It has dipped back beneath this line there. Take that. It has dipped back beneath this line. This line is the high from Monday. Price engulfed on Tuesday. It broke that high of Monday. That's the daily engulfing. It comes back into Monday's candle. That's the signal. Right? And this is our six. So let me just put that there. That was our 38.2. Retracement. The question now becomes, what liquidity profile was this respecting? Type in the comment section if you understand what I mean. For those of you who were uh, with me on m Tuesday night talking about liquidity profiles, whatever sent this back up had to have been a market maker liquidity profile. How do we find it? Type in the comment section if you understand what I mean. Everything has been satisfied. Daily engulfing, price comes back into the engulfing, and it gave... Uh, one second. It gave... a deep discount retracement at 38.2. But for us to trust this trade, we need a liquidity profile. Something that tells us that this turned around because it encountered an area of liquidity. Please type in the comment section if you understand that. You don't need to understand what liquidity profile is, I'll show you. But you understand the fact that we don't trust this unless we can tag it with a liquidity profile all right well this is the answer first of all a previous high is a liquidity profile so gerard understands reggie understands that's good a previous high is a liquidity profile number one secondly I want you to look at this right here. Thirty minute and one hour charts. I use uh, blue for both of them, and I'm going to. Let's put that there. Right. Can you guys remember what I taught you about a fair value gap? I'm still trying to come up with a name for it to make it make more sense. Uh, but I'm using a word from a mentor of mine, a fair value gap. Well, this is the fair value gap. Price breaks through there. Look, breaks through there. And it hasn't touched it yet. And so all this while, we're just sitting pretty, waiting for it to come back and feel that there. Price blew through this. And if you look at this on a one-hour chart, it will make it even clearer. On a one-hour chart, the moment price leaves that level there, it does not come back to it. Sometimes it comes back in the same next candle, then that's fine. If it comes back in the next candle, then it may not come back in the future. But it blows through it, and it keeps going. doesn't come back. A four-hour chart will make it even clearer. Look, on the four-hour chart, boom, it runs away. And off it goes. Well, 
very simple. It comes back down and it nicks it. Now, there is a final liquidity profile I'm going to show you. It's a kind of order block. Um, I'm going to use Tokbe's name for it. Uh, Tokbe has a name for this. In fact, Tokbe was the first person in our trading circle who showed me this block eight years ago. Uh, this is when we were discovering some stuff. So I, you could say I learned this from Tokbe two years ago. This here is a special kind of order block. We will show it to you next week. It's called a manipulation block. Why? You see, price is going up and then it comes back down. So you would have called this a bearish order block, right? That looks right there like a bearish order block. The problem is this then turns around and price blows through that block. So it went from a bearish order block to now a violated high. This here is called a manipulation block. Why? They use this block here to drive price the other way to manipulate people to pick up stops and then go the way they really wanted to go. The next time price comes back to that level, you expect a reversal. Why? They sold here. So they could buy down here. On their way through it, their sell orders here need to be unwound. And so as they are buying back up here, by the time they get here, they're going to buy back their own sell orders to a degree here. But if they haven't finished doing that, price is going to come back in here for someone else to pick up those sell orders and therefore they can neutralize their trade and then they go where they really want to go so you have liquidity profile one a previous high liquidity profile two a fair value gap liquidity profile three a special order block which is called a manipulation block um you okay you 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 okay let me ready good question how do you recognize manipulation block without hindsight let me show you that on a different chart let's see let me pick up a chart uh do i have any charts with nothing written on them anymore <laughs> okay let's see i don't want to open up a new one okay let's go back in the past in fact, there's one forming right now I can show you. And this is perfect because it's not hindsight. There's one forming now. Right. Can you see this here, Reggie? Can you see this level here? For the question, for everybody to know. So I'm answering the question, how do you recognize the manipulation block without hindsight? Cool. So this is how you do it. This here, as of this time, this morning, was a bearish order block. When it formed in the morning, it was obvious, it looked like it was an obvious bearish order block. Right? Now, the moment price turns around, and it's still in here. If it was still in there, you would say, yes, it's respecting this order block. It's going to go down. The moment price goes through it, and as you can see, price has already gone through it once. It now becomes a manipulation block. If price closed down, it, it, it didn't close above it here. But if price closes above it, Clearly above it, it's now officially a manipulation block. The next time price comes back in there, we would expect it 
if the daily bias is in the right direction, you would expect that to happen. Does that make does that make sense, Reggie? Does that answer your question? Right, so back to our chart. I'm trying to get that arrow to look a bit nicer. Sorry, I'm just I'm just OCD like that. <laughs> my chart will just be affecting my eyes. Yeah, if I don't fix the arrow. Good. So ready? I'm glad that answers your question. So when you put all that together, first of all, on the overall controlling level, price is at a re at, at a region beneath 50. So it's in a discount region overall. That's signal number one, or p this is part of your signal, the first part of your signal. The second part of your signal is it's created a daily engulfing and come back down into that level. The third part of your signal is in that micro Fibonacci. Why do I keep doing this? In that micro Fibonacci, price is now at the 38.2 level, so that's in that particular expansion leg, that's a deep discount. You have a fair value gap. You have that high. And you have a manipulation block. And if you look at it, there's two. There's this small manipulation block here. But there's also a bigger one from here. There's also that bigger manipulation block there. If you go back even further to the top of that high, there is an even bigger manipulation block there. When you see all these things line up one by one by one, this is just telling you this trade is begging for you to take it. And I didn't. And of course, we had framed our target from the start of the week. Our target was this order block there. In fact, you could also, there's another one there. So when, when you see two other blocks converge like this, if you're a risk averse trader like me, you just choose the bottom level and the top level. So that would be your, so there we are. If we were to take, let me show this. If we were to take this entire level, as one big order block and we put a Fibonacci there 50% is here so we are whew, a pip or so away from 50% yeah price may still come back there and tag the 50% or it could just drop all the way from here if I see a daily engulfing today, daily engulfing means price takes out this level here. Actually, I'll take this back. I don't even need to see an engulfing of this candle here today. I just need price to reverse through its own low of that day. Put that in green. I need price to reverse through its own low. That's an example of what we call, I showed you last week, a one-day engulfing. So it'll look like, if that were to happen, it'll look like a doji uh, on a daily chart. It'll like a pin on a daily chart. If price closes beneath there today, right, then I'm looking to do something like this. This is one of the rare times where I might trade on a Friday. And I would only be looking to come back to this level here. That's why I said on Fridays, my target objectives are very low. And the only reason I'd be taking this trade on a Friday is because I missed the one from yesterday. If I got yesterday's one, I'm done for the week. I'm happy. Walk your dog. Play with your kids. Take your wife or your husband on a date. You know, just chill. Don't 
put more money into the market that you can lose because you're greedy. But that was the trade right there. That was a million dollar trade. This one here. And so you put, this is what you would have done. Your entry here, literally just above that, that daily high there. Also above that zone there. And if you wanted to be really careful, you'd put your, um, one second, that's from a, a higher time frame. Let me refine that. That should be there. So yeah, they're actually the same level. You'd put your stop loss there. One, two, three, four, five, pretty much almost six. However, the other way you can do it is at that level here is take the hour candlestick so that's the 50 percent level there that's this is this is an example of a doji right this is a one hour doji where tiny body long wick of the candle so you put your there and this would be just beneath the candle and then you would have done one, two, three, four, five, six, and a bit. If you wanted to be really aggressive, hold on a quick second, guys. Um, if you wanted to be really aggressive, um, which I would advise against, but some of you like the thrill, it's still a high probability trade. But the problem with this trade here on a f using the 15 minute engulfing is price could come back and just nick you beneath here and then you'd be crying. However, even if that were to happen, so you lost 1%. But then you entered again the second time, which is what the people who use this entry method would do. You entered again a second time. So you'd be down 1%, but you'd have gotten 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and pretty much almost 8. So you could have entered this trade for anything between 5 to 8 to 1. I'm just going to console myself on the fact that I called it, <laughs> I, I predicted it. So yeah, in my mind, I won the trade. I will just spend my profits in my mind. Right. So that's uh, obviously EU. Yeah, we saw a little bit. Actually, let's, let's look at EU real quick. Uh, let's see if I can find our beginning of the week prediction on EU. Uh, it's in one of these charts here somewhere. Aha, there we go. No, not that one. This one, yes. Look at this here. For those of you who are there on Monday, you saw that we predicted this before the week started, right? That we wanted price. Let me take this out the way. We don't need this anymore. We also don't need this anymore. So there's an order block there, right? And in fact, if we were to be precise, that is, the you know, this is the wick. There it is there. There's roughly 50% of it. That line, there's roughly 50% of it. And we drew out this high. We said we were expecting price to come into that level and nick that high there. This is why I'm not so sad about GU because we were going to take the up trade on GU. On EU, I wasn't so keen about taking the up trade uh, for the simple reason that... It was in a consolidation. It's in a four-hour consolidation here, right? So you drop down the one-hour chart. Uh, this was the engulfing for the day, for the week, sorry. So this is Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. So it engulfed on Monday. That's the green line there. It engulfed on Monday. Came back into the engulfing range. 
the Fibonacci. Okay, it comes down into deep discount, which is good. Very, very good. We need 38.2. Your question now is, where's your liquidity profile? Where's your market maker liquidity profile to make you convinced that this is a valid trade? Here's your answer. There's a couple. First of all, daily highs and lows. That's a daily high there. Right? This is the high of this particular day. That's why I said always watch even on lower time frames for your daily highs and lows. There's a high from that day there. Right? Secondly, and I want you to look at this now. This, this, this is not that easy to spot, but you will see it if you look hard. You will see it if you look hard. This here, this wick of this candle there, that's a manipulation block. Why? Price comes in there, right? And blows back up. So price comes here. It's coming down that day, or that one hour candle. It comes all the way down here. Then it moves all the way back up. That's the same thing as a normal order block, right? It comes down here, and it moves back up. Experience will show you this over time, that wicks of candles can be hiding order blocks. comes back up. So here we would say this. We would say that this was the order block, right? Because it drove price one way and then the other way. Well, even though this is a wick, not the body of a candle, think of it. Price comes down here and then comes all the way back up, all the way up to here. Because this is where this can so it this is where this candle opens. It's a bullish, it's a bearish candle. Let me put this there. It's a bearish candle. So it means it started here and then dropped down. If this candle started here and this one got all the way down here at some point, it means that on the close of this candle, it went all the way up. If you drop down to a lower time frame, you will see, there we go, that that, see that, yeah, that's, what, that's what happened, 30-minute chart. That's what you call a rejection order block. I'll show you that next week. And if you go down to a 15-minute chart, you will then see it like a normal order block. Can you see that there? On a 15-minute chart, it you can see it clearly as a traditional order block. But as you get more experience, you can spot it from the wick of the candle on a higher time frame. So we have... So I'm going to... So we... One second. Um, is this mouse... Do I need to change my batteries for my mouses? Okay. So, we have um, daily engulfings. So, this engulfed here, but this here for the weak engulfs there. It comes back in, in between 38.2 to 21.4, deep discount. It finds this rejection, or sorry, this manipulation order block. Ooh, look at that. This is nice. This is what I'm looking for. I put Good. This looks like I will get a trade on this today or tomorrow. Probably tomorrow at this point. Um, it comes back there. So this would have been also a valid trade. And then it gives you a second bite at the apple on Wednesday. On an up week, the low of the week is going to form where? On Tuesday or Wednesday. Between 6 to 10 London or 12 to 3 London. There you go. So that's 10 o'clock London on the dot. 
the next day it gives it to you at seven o'clock london my server time is two hours ahead if you missed london here new york gives you a re-entry 3 p.m on the dot if you miss london here this day new york gives you a re-entry uh, actually no this is no this is so this is still london 10 so if you miss that new york gives you your re-entry at 1 p.m it's just I don't understand why people don't use these principles. They want fancy stuff. They want, anyway, I'm just going to leave it alone. But all the Instagram superstars you see, this is too simple for them. They want stuff that scratches their ego. And so your entry would have been here. Your entry would have been there. At the top of the zone, your risk there, and you would have had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually, this was a better trade than GU I was crying about. I passed on this one intentionally because I was waiting for GU. But this was the trade, folks. <laughs> this was the one. Okay, so now I have two trades to be upset about. This was the one right here. This was Neo in the Matrix. But anyway, so it's completed the first move of the week, which uh, I missed out on. I'm not sure if you guys did. So, but we also were waiting for it to get to this level here, which it has done. Right? And we have seen a four hour engulfing. That's huge. It's not quite a daily engulfing, but a far engulfing is good. Also, if you look at this here, one rejection, two rejections, three rejections, four, five. On a daily chart, this chart is telling us that level is respected. If today closes as a doji, meaning, or some people call a hanging man, that's the low of the day. It's already been passed. If today closes beneath that low here, and even better beneath this one, if that closes there, beneath there, I'm looking for a short tomorrow. So let's assume it closes all the way down here. Let's assume it closes here today, right? Tomorrow, I'm going to draw my Fibonacci. Wait for... A premium that coincides with an order block. So that would be that one there. Uh, insert shape. That will be that one there. Or now that I've shown it to you, I've been hiding it in my analysis for the last few weeks because I hadn't taught it to you yet, and I didn't want to dis I didn't want to confuse you. But now that I've shown it to you, I don't need to hide it any longer. You can see there is a manipulation block right there. Can you see that? One second. This is actually the real one there. I know there's one here, but this for me is the real one. Why? There is, so price was coming down. So it was, go so it was going up here. Then it came down. So that this block here, if you dive down into a lower chart, now you can see the other block on the 30 minute chart, can't you? And if you dive down even 50 minutes further, it's now very, very clear. So it's a manipulation block in that price went through it, came this way, touched it and came back down the first time. I am going to wait for it to come back to it again. And if that happens, either here, this is above 51, this is 6. I'm going to wait for 61.8. So basically, anywhere above this, le above this level is fair game for me. And I'm going to take a short from there to... I want to clean out this high, this low. It'll, well, it'll clean this out. It'll clean out this one again. It'll come back down into this range here. So somewhere here, that would give me potentially... 
67 pips. Not bad. Not the one we missed out, but it's still a good way to end the week if it presents itself. So that's EU. Uh, on Swissy, I'm just leaving Swissy alone this week because it's not fully made up its mind. Actually, it's made up its mind, but it's its volatility isn't the best at the moment. In that it's, yeah, I'll show you that when we, okay, so cool. There we have it. So, how much time do we have left? We've got uh, 40 minutes left. So, I can teach you volatility in 40 minutes or less. It's not going to take long. So, volatility, real quick. It's the measure of how far price moves in a range of time. Delete. Insert. Text. Put that in purple to write. Let's make that 16. Nope. Let's make it bigger. Let's make it 18. Yeah. Text property. So. Volati volatility is the measure of how far price moves in a defined period of time. All right, we need to continue this. Find what just happened. All right, um, be like that. This is strange. Okay, let's reduce that back down to 16. Let's get rid of those. Delete that. In the defined. Period of time. Right, so that's volatility. In essence, for instance, between here and here, in a few hours, price moved 82 pips. You would say that's a period of reasonably high volatility. So one two three four five six in six hourly candles price moved over 82 pips so high volatility let me blow that up so we can find that again so one candle two candles three candles four candles five six between here and here, price moved 85 pips. I'm going to just draw the high and the low there. From there to there. And we're going to draw an arrow that says high volatility. In essence, price was volatile. Uh, let's change those colors. Green is probably not the best to write with. Sorry, I know this is wasting time. I just warned you guys, my brain can be semi-OCD sometimes. Purple. Purple. Cool. And we'll make this purple too. So one call on the screen for the writing and the drawing yep my brain feels a whole lot better it was crying a minute ago so let's take a screenshot of that and I'm gonna move this 
this in further define period dot time let's put that beneath it instead cool so that's high volatility insert text high volatility um, why does that keep doing that high volatility right now In the same area of time, look at this here. We counted six candlesticks. Let me put this here. Insert text. Six candles, 85 pips. Here, let's count another six candles. One, two, three, four, five, six. So from the high of this candle to the low of this candle here, six candles, same six hours, price has only moved 11 pips. 11.2 pips, 11.4 pips. It's the middle. If you're wondering how many, if you look at those numbers on this tool here when they move, see those numbers there? Um, the first number is the number of candles in between the two positions. The second number is the number of pips, but you have to divide by 10 to get the number of pips. So that says 4442. That's actually 44.2. The third number is the actual price. At that level there so you see four four one yeah so if I do that there from that high there to that low there no no one one two three four five, this one here from that high there to that low there that is 11.2 pips so I'm gonna draw that out I and low Meta Trader is getting on my nerve today. Hi. There we have it. Actually, no. I lied. This was the low in that time. This was the low in that time. Ignore this one here because I'm talking about from this candle here. Or in fact, to make it clear, let me just move this there. And then move that down by one candle. So that's still there. Right. This is an area of low volatility. So this is an area of low volatility. And we had the same six candles. But we only had I think by the time we did that, I think we had about 12 pips. Yeah. Six candles, 12 pips. Now, please type in the comment section if you can see that there's a huge difference between this here and this there. Type in the comment section if you can see the, what I mean from what I've drawn. Same length of time, six candles, six hours. 
In one of them, price moves by 85 pips. In another one, price moves by only 12 pips. Let me know in the comment section if you can see the difference. Now, just hold on a quick second, guys. One quick second. All right, guys, sorry about that. So, I'm back. Right, finally, you can see the, the volatility. That's good. Cool. So, my question now is, would you, if you had, because many of you are busy, right? You're busy people. You're not lazy. You're not sat down at home all day long in a bathrobe like I am today. Just today is the only day I'm sat at home in a bathrobe. <laughs> so, but usually my life is pedal to the metal I do not have time to stare at a chart, number one, all day long. Number two, there is the psychological disadvantage. When you enter a trade, if it either starts going against you or just hangs around for a long time in the same region, it starts playing tricks on your mind. Is it the right trade? You start seeing all the reasons why you should have gone the other way. You can end up closing a trade that you should have kept. You can end up keeping a trade you should have closed. The best experience as a trader, right, is to put your trade in and in two candles see it start to move in your direction. Let me repeat. Now, whatever you're trading, if you're a daily trader, two days. Of course, if you're a daily trader, that means your trade is going to pan out over a week or two. So two days is not bad. If you're a four-hour trader, that's two, four hours. That's like eight hours of a day. It's not bad. If you're an hourly trader, if you're a scalper, five minutes. But you want to see your trade. Write this down. Start to move in your direction between two or three candles. It doesn't mean if that doesn't happen, it's not going to win. It's just not going to be as safe in your mind. You're going to begin to doubt yourself. And so if you want to see immediate reactions on your trade to give you peace of mind, you want to be trading in high volatility time places or time sessions. You, want, you don't want to trade here. You definitely want to trade here. Now, I've put the daily dividers to prove a point. When I keep telling you to take trades at certain times of the day, this is why. Down here is what time? This is 1 to 2 p.m. in the afternoon. So 2 p.m. was when it started to move in your direction in the afternoon. That is between the window of 12 noon and 3 p.m. in London by the London time zone. That's what we call the New York Open. That's when the New York session opens. We're going to look at sessions uh, next week as well. It's also in your PDFs. That's why we say take your trades there. Why? Immediate reaction. Immediate feedback. On the other hand, this one here is at 6 p.m. New York. That's after the 3 p.m. spot, right? The trade for the day was up here. So that day's trade was up here. 
and you got the chance to enter it between two and three server times. So that's between uh, 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. No, sorry, between two and three. So that's between 1 p.m. and no, 12 noon and one. So that's between 12 noon and one by my server uh, in London because my server is two hours ahead of London. So this is where to have gotten in and you would have gotten a cool, well, not not much, but 30 pips. If you miss that window here, it just keeps middling around. So the first reason you want to understand or be able to spot volatility. Take that away now. Is. Volatile conditions help to they help to number one. Frame highly responsive trade entries. Frame highly responsive trade entries. Now, the first reason for that is the time of day. Like I said, you need to understand this. Times of the day you should be trading on certain pairs and times you should not be. But let's take that a bit deeper. Because there are times where at a time of the day you would not expect, you will see high volatility. That will happen, right? It, it definitely will happen once or twice every, every week or so. Let me just put this down here. And I'll just put this up here. Actually, put that there, put that there. Put that beneath it there. Right. Now, why are these periods of time so highly responsive? Well, the answer is these are when market makers are trading. Remember, this is the Swissy against the US dollar. So the US dollar means that traders in the United States will be trading. The Swissy means traders in Switzerland or other parts of Europe will be trading. These guys work, they trade for a living. They're not like you running around 5 a.m. or 2 a.m. in the morning staring at your charts. No, they have 9 to 5. They're, they're workplaces. They're trading from desks in a bank or a high-value uh, uh, fund, a high-value uh, hedge fund. You want to know the hours of the day when they are working. So I'm going to show you this real quick so that you stop um, arguing with this. In your trading so in Europe the center of the European market is London London is the clearinghouse for the entire European Union financially European center is London The North American, in fact, I just call it the American because this includes the, the American center is New York. It used to be New York and Chicago, but New York and Chicago are very close in time, number one. And secondly, it's now just New York. Um, the same company that owns the Chicago exchange now owns the New York exchange. So they operate based on the New York cadence. And the Asian center the Asian center is Tokyo. There's another one in Sydney, Australia. So Tokyo versus slash Sydney. In essence, 90% or more 
of the transactions that go on in the foreign exchange market are going to pass through one of those three centers. Let me repeat. Pretty much 90% of all foreign exchange transactions will pass through one of those three centers. You want to know when those guys are awake and trading. Right? So, the average person... Let's put this down here. Average person works from 9 a.m. Right? To... 6 p.m. Or let's say 5. 9 to 5, right? It's the average human being. Works from 9 to 5. Cool. The really committed people of whom traders are if everything opens at 9, the average trader will be up and at their chart from by 7 a.m. That's average. Some of them stay longer. 7 a.m. One second, I'm just straight. Average trader. This is a professional trader, right? Now, I just put the full word average. Sorry, guys, my brain will just let me carry on. Now, in let's let me show you this now. Uh, I just thought of an idea of how to show you this real good. European time zones. Uh, how many time zones are there in Europe? Let's see. So Europe uses three standard zones. From west to east, the time zones are... Let me put this up. So Western European time, Central European time, and Eastern European time. Europe, daylight saving, blah, blah, blah. Okay. See if I can find it. Aha, there we go. So, there is that there. Cool. So, you see London, which is in the UK, is on the far western one, which is there. That's where London is. So, let's go back to our chart. Just checking that was right. And so by 7 a.m. in the UK, the traders are at their desk. Notice I said they're at their desk. They've woken up, they've brushed their teeth, had their food. If they have children, they've, you know, kissed them, whatever. They're probably not going to do the school run. <laughs> and they're at their office at 7. If they're at their office at 7... Right? It means one second. They've been stalking their trades since five AM. Don't argue with me, just take it. I have audited, I personally have audited banks right i used to work as an auditor i've audited banks like barclays and hsbc uh i have i have friends who work in the city i have mentees who work in the city i have mentors uh i have a family member who is uh one of the uh the top officials in one of the biggest banks in the world in the whole of africa they've been stocking their trade since 5 a.m standard in essence by the time they get to their charts, they've got MetaTrade on their phone, on their laptop. If they see something setting up, they could already have put their orders in. 
So I want you to map out 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. across these three time zones. This is your assignment. 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. across these three time zones. And I want you to map out times in the day when two of them cross over. 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. in each of these three time zones. Map out times in the day when they cross over. And especially if you go from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. when they cross over. You will come up with 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. in London and 12 noon to 3 p.m. in London. That's how I got the time zones. Does that make sense? If these are the three major zones, when do two of them open at the same time? And the 12 noon to 3 p.m. one in the afternoon, you could potentially have at some point in the year where all three of them are open for about one hour. Those, these are when you're going to have the largest number of market maker traders trading. Not you and me with our $1,000 accounts. People with millions, hundreds of millions, and even billions of accounts are going to be trading at these times. Therefore, they are going to sponsor, write the word down, sponsor these kinds of moves. When you see 83 pips move in this short time space, it was sponsored by an institutional trader, a market maker trader. This time here, the only person trading are you and me. Stay away from here. Stay away from there. Let's drop this down. 30 minute chart. Stay away from there. And play here. Let's assume it took a short here, for instance, right? So for uh, okay, this is a thirty-minute chart now. So one, two, so one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours, seven hours. For eight hours, your trade is doing nothing. Then it starts to go down. Yay! Finally, and then it stops. It comes back up against you. Stops you out and then goes your way. Why? Because you were trading in a low volatility time frame, a, a low volatility time period. Please type if you understand that. Many of the times where you got the right trade, but you got stopped out before it really went your way the same day. Look, this is all in the same day here or from one night to the next. It'll be because you got into that trade at the wrong time. Trade here. Where you can see immediate feedback. And you know that if you get the direction right at this time, you have someone with deep pockets sponsoring that move. Now, let me see. 26th of June. I have a hunch that that might be a Monday or Friday. Let me just check. I might be wrong. Let me see. Calendar, 26th of June. What day of the week was that? 26th of June was a Friday. See, I'm right. So that's why it's still jacking up and down. Was it Friday? Yeah, it was Friday. Still jacking up and down. This is a Monday. High volatility. But then we have a Tuesday where we have just as great a trade. And notice, the one on Tuesday is the one that actually sets the direction for the week. So even though you have a high volatility Monday, it is simply a manipulation, right? But if you trade at the right time on a Tuesday, look, this is a Tuesday, 20... No, what? no, 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 I'm, no, 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 that's not right, no. 26th is a Monday. It's a Friday. Let me look at 26th of Friday. 29th, yes, I'm right, is a Monday. 30th is a Tuesday, yes. And what time of the day is it? I can bet my money. There you go. So 10.30 to 11 a.m. server time. That will be 9, 8.30 to 9 a.m. in London. You have that one day 
70 pips, but then it keeps going the, so you can trust that direction until it gets down here, 100 pips overall. So you see how by lining up the right day, because Mondays are usually low volatility days. There are some exceptions where they're manipulations. Fridays are usually low volatility days as well because they're the start and end of a week. Uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays are usually the highest volatility days, usually, but then the time zones are the time zones. The days may differ. You could have a high volatility Monday, a low volatility Tuesday, but 9 or 6 to, six to 10, 12 to 3 in London, those are gold. That's when you want to be trading because you know at that time that you are working with someone with deep pockets who is going to defend the levels that you trade from because they are sponsoring those levels. And of course, we've looked at this already. Uh, one second. If you are trading using high volatility, you are looking for pockets of liquidity. So successful trading is about pairing volatility with liquidity. Are you in a time of the day or week or month that is likely to have high volatility? And are you at a level that is likely to have high liquidity? Right? Give you an example. There's an order block. Come on. There. Look at this, right? I'm going to take this away for now. Trading is not difficult, guys, if you understand how the markets work. Now, Reggie, I'm not throwing shade. <laughs> Reggie, I'm not throwing shade at you. Like I said, if your indicators work for you, as long as you understand institutional order flow, use them. But you know what? Let me let me see the, let me see if my hunch is correct. Let me throw uh, Reggie's system here. Template. So Reggie strategy. Oh boy, I've lost my uh, one second. Oh snap! I've lost my modifications. Okay, but I anyway, twenty. So yeah, twenty nine. So this was the day. Okay, fine. That was the day, right? Cool. Yeah, that was the day. So this is the order block, right? This is the time of the day where, where we expect. So let me see now. 12 noon by my time would be 14 server time. So there. Let me drop that down one level. Actually, you're using the hour. Fine. So that's 12 noon. Bang on time, right? Okay. Sorry about the noise outside. Somebody's cutting grass. Hold on a second, guys. Hold on, please. Hold on. All right, so I've adjusted that. So Reggie, can you see how here, at the time you were taking this trade, look at this, right? That would have been the bottom of the Bollinger Band there. Am I back on? Yeah. Sorry, let me fix that noise. Sorry, guys. Um, 
I can't do anything about that. I live right, ne right next to a park and someone is cutting the grass at the park. So, ready? This is the bottom of your Bollinger Band, right? This is your stochastic crossover. Can you see that? It's not the Bollinger Band and the stochastic crossover that caused price to move. It is an area of liquidity at a time of volatility. The, the New York Open, right? And institutional order flow. So if you draw Fibonacci from here to here, the high to the low of that re that expansion. This is deep liquid. This is deep discount. A market maker is looking to buy. It's at the right time of the day. It's converging with an order block, right? You have volatility and liquidity with correct institutional order flow principles. There has already been an intermediate stop hunt here. If you look at this here. People who came down here went up again. So this has been violated twice now. And it's come into an area of liquidity. Now, you can trust this signal, Reggie. Uh, Reggie, please let me know in the comment section if you can see what I'm talking about. You can trust this signal on your Bollinger Band and your Stochastic for this reason. And notice... This candle here was not the candle to have trusted it at. It is this one. When you get this reaction here, that's when you trust it. You could be more refined and say you want to pick this other block there. Look at that one there. That's the money maker, actually. If you'd waited for it to come down here, and just seeing this as the first dip, which actually is what I would have done in hindsight, because... First dip, go, come back. Can you see that there? In which case, this then becomes the liquidity level. Yep, this is this is the real institutional one. Guys, please give me one more second. Give me one more second. All right, guys, if that doesn't fix that noise, I don't know what will. So, that's the order block there. Right? And this is the reaction. It's not, this, it's not the stochastic and the Bollinger Band. That's just showing you something which, with trained eyes, you can see without them. And then we go. So, that's an example of a correct use of volatility and liquidity that is shown by this signal. So I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put this here. This is the signal. This is the point at which the stochastic would have crossed and so you would have, you would be in on this candle here. That's a correct use. Let me give you another example of a bad use. You see this here? Sorry, can you guys hear that sound in my in behind me? Let me know because it's horrible. Let me know if it's disturbing you real quick. Okay. So, this is another example of the same signal. That did not work. Right? That's the same signal. The bottom of the Bollinger Band. 
and the stochastic crossover. But it doesn't work because it's not followed. First of all, you're in the wrong time of the day. So that's 23. So that's 9 p.m. at night on a Friday. Why would you enter a trade at 9 p.m. on a Friday? No matter what your indicators say, that does not make sense. Secondly, you don't yet have institutional order flow. You're still here at an area of premium. It's above 50. You could argue it's in the fair value range between 61 and 38. You shouldn't be buying up here. Thirdly, what order block are you pairing it with? Well, I guess you could say you're pairing it with this one. I guess you could say you're pairing it with this one, but yeah, it's in the wrong level of the chart. So this is an example of an indicator signal not to take. This is an example of one to take. And so I don't have a problem with you using indicators as long as you're using them to filter out, sorry, not filter out, you're using them to confirm a trade that you have taken based on institutional order flow. Reggie, if you're there, let me know that you're there, that you understand this principle, because uh, I know this is your system we're using to explain. Um, correct signal, wrong signal. All you're doing is pairing liquidity and volatility. I've, I've deleted that already. You're pairing liquidity and volatility, and you're getting high level trades, low risk, high reward trades. So I want you to do me two assignments. First of all, I want you to go back on whatever pairs you trade on the hourly chart and find every single time where price moved more than 60 pips in five hours. 60 pips, 5 hours. 60 pips, 5 hours. So 5 hours will be for instance, if you got in at 10 a.m., you come out at 5 p.m. 60 pips, 5 hours. And mark the day in any direction. Mark the day of the week and the time of the day where that move happened. Assignment number one. Oh, this, this is the part one of the assignment. Every time price moved more than... 60 pips in five hours. What day of the week did it happen? What time of the day did it happen? So what day of the week did it happen? What time of the week did it happen? Thirdly, was it at a level, what Fibonacci level on the controlling range did it happen? For instance, if price is here, then these are this is the controlling range. So what Fibonacci level in the controlling range did happen? That's the expansion. That's the retracement. And finally, can you spot the liquidity profile that drove the move? So what day of the week? What time of the day? What level of discount or premium on the controlling range? And finally, can you spot the liquidity level or profile that drove the move? This is horrible. They shouldn't be doing this in front of my house at this time of the day. Anyway. Guys, I think this is a sign we should shut it down here because we've done an hour and a half almost anyway. So I'm going to leave this here. Remember, assignment number one. Spot 50 pips in six, or 60 pips in five candles or less. What day of the week? What time of the day? what level of discount or premium on the controlling Fibonacci range, and if you can spot the liquidity profile that drove that move. I am going to end it there for today. Uh, it's been lovely having you guys. As usual, keep your eye out on Telegram for information. Um, when are we back next? This evening, I believe, is when we're back next. Let's just find that out real quick. This evening at 9.15... Uh, we are back for a closed forum advanced session. 
And then tomorrow, the final session of the week at 11 a.m., uh, bring your live chart and analysis. Let's look at what happened during the course of the week and explain it so that we can look know what to look for next week or what to avoid next week. Um, for those of you now, a couple of you have quote unquote registered, haven't paid. Uh, I'm going to be sending out a, uh, we are going to be sending out a, a batch of reminders today uh, to make your payment for the month of July. Uh, we don't want you to lose any access moving forward, but we really need you to pay up. Uh, if you haven't a registered student yet, this is what you're missing out on. Uh, the best education at this price point that you can have, in my opinion, anywhere in the financial markets. If you see this for anywhere near the price, let us know and we will, well, we won't be able to beat it because it means that person is giving it away for free. Um, for the new students who started recently, you've gotten your first few uh, Market Breaker course materials, the PDF and the videos for session, uh, for lesson one, introduction to the markets and introduction to trading. Uh, you're gonna get another batch today or tomorrow morning and then moving forward, you'll get on average one every two weeks or one a week, some weeks. Uh, what we're doing as part of the VIP mentorship, this webinars, but then one on one. Some of you spent some time with Joshua yesterday, helping you set up your charts, uh, helping you get ready. Uh, you have access to myself, to talk bear. We can sit with you. You send us your trading results. We can look at your strategies. For those of you who already started trading, uh, like we don't, we did with Reggie's uh, yesterday or two days ago. Was it yesterday or two days ago? And give you tips on how to tweak it. Also, we offer personal tuition. Uh, if you want just one of us to sit down, now you get you get a few hours of personal tuition for free every month. But beneath that, you get two hours of personal tuition every month. Beneath beyond that, it's seventy pound an hour. Mm -hmm. But you get fifty percent of that if you are a registered student. So for thirty five pound an hour, if you're a registered student, we'll sit down with you and actually work with you one on one. The mastermind inner circle is for those uh, who go. Uh, experienced traders, profitable traders. In essence, you don't need any more quote and unquote learning. You just want tools to help you get to the next level. So that's where you get the signals. Uh, we give you strategies and trade models that we've designed. Uh, every month, we'll send you watch lists. So these are the pairs we think are going to move significantly this month based on higher level. I don't mean time frame level. I mean a higher level of principle, fundamental and technical analysis. Uh, we're developing a robot at the moment that's all, almost ready that can trade for you automatedly. Uh, indicators, other tools, and of course, you also get your heavily discounted personal tuition. Uh, and finally, something which I am excited about that we're putting together for both our VIP mentorship and our inner circle traders, our mastermind inner circle uh, member traders. We call it the Traders Village. It's almost ready. We're building an online website community of we're go, we hope we'll get to a th thousands of traders uh, where almost like a Facebook for trading is the best way we can put it. So it's like a social media platform for traders alone. And a virtual trading floor means that you can log in and you come in to the system and almost like being in a trading floor in a professional bank with 50, 60 other traders, you can be in your home but you can also have that level of um, moral support and people trading the markets at the same time as you. What are you doing? What are you looking at? What information? And we can actually have experts. This is the EU expert, the, the Swiss -E expert. This is the, the, the gold expert, the Bitcoin expert. Uh, and also, we also want to see if we can get to the place where we build physical trading floors in certain cities. So we want one in London, one in Lagos, one in New York, other places where we have students built a student basis build where you can come into a building great internet air conditioning food other people around you and you can do your trading for the day uh, those are to come by the time we get there the prices are going to have gone up significantly let me warn you uh, no more than a year from now could be six months no more than a year from now our price of 79.99 is going to almost double we're going to 149.99 anytime within the next six and 12 months if you're in you're in at least until your period has your subscription cycle is over but if you miss it you're gonna to have to come back and pay more well it is what it is all right guys take care have an amazing weekend in the markets uh i will see you weeks are in the markets 
what's left of it. I will see you tonight at 9.15 in the closed forum advanced session. Uh, take care. Great trading. Bye-bye.